Today we're going to be talking about exception handling. The entire way I want you to think about exception handling is, let's just imagine for a second, this is your program. Okay, it's the, it's the world, it's going nicely, it's going smoothly, nothing wrong with it going on there, and then your program crashes. Well, what happens typically if you think about when your program crashes? Everything's on fire, you're, you're freaking out, you know, oh crap, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm late for my submissions, all that nonsense, you know. Typically, you know, the idea is that when your program crashes, uh, it halts entirely. And the entire reason why is because it does not know what to do. You didn't tell it what to do in this situation. Uh, so just as a, a nice little example of this. Let's say, for example, I came in and said x equals 10. Simple enough, nothing crazy. Uh, and then I came in with y equals 0. Print x divided by y. Now, if you're you know, astute, you'll realize uh, we can't divide by 0. That's mathematically impossible. We should not be allowed to do that. Python allows me to do it. Now, Python doesn't know what to do. Uh, in the case of a divide by zero, it's freaking out over this, so it's going to crash. Uh, now, as programmers, we're pretty smart about this. You know, we wouldn't uh, do something like this, but we might have to deal with something where the user uh, types in uh, things that can cause us to crash. So, say for example, I come in, enter a number, and I'm just going to copy that into my Y. Same kind of thing. Oh, well, now it's not me, the developer, uh, who's writing out these zero uh, divisions. It's the user who comes in and crashes me. And the same kind of thing. Well, maybe the user's smart enough. Maybe we do some uh, error handling and we can, you know, uh, input validate what they're typing. And so maybe, oh, okay, well, maybe, okay, they, they do the 10. Instead of t not typing zeros, because we stop that, they type an A. That's a completely different error entirely. So what we can do is inside of our programs, you know, yes, we can do some if statements and while loops to uh, make sure we're validating their inputs beforehand, but sometimes it gets through. And so what I also like to use is something known as the try. Now the try, the entire idea I like to imagine is it's treating this like this code that I'm tabbing in right now. All of the code in here, uh, it doesn't automatically happen. I like to imagine it's a parallel universe, right? We're using the globe uh, analogy that I, I showed in the slides. I'm gonna create a, a, a parallel universe to my own where this code happens. And let me just see what happens. Okay, well, what happens? If it works, fine, perfect. That means uh, I'm allowed to do it myself. If it doesn't, it crashes, oh well, we have stuff to handle that for a second. And that's where the except comes into play. Except is basically saying, oh, well, uh, here, now I want to stop something uh, from happening. So uh, print you cannot divide by zero. Oh. And so again, now I run this. Boom. Enter a number, I enter my 10. Now, again, like I said, if the code works perfectly fine, again, I'm watching it and I say that's perfectly fine, run that for myself, uh, in this case, five divided by, or 10 divided by five, parallel universe sees that and goes, okay, that's perfectly fine, I'll allow it. And I print out, oh, 2.0. Now, if I come in and do my 10 divided by zero, instead of me erroring, my program allows me Instead of doing this, oh, sorry, instead of doing, which one are you? There, instead of doing this error, it catches it and fixes it. You cannot divide by zero. And the reason why we want to do this is because I might have uh, print other code that needs to run. Now, if I, again, if I come in and remove those try accepts, boom, run this into the number 10, zero, I never get that other code needs to run. The program halts entirely. The try catch or try accept block is going to now take that. I say my 10, I say my zero. You cannot divide by uh, zero. Other code that needs to still run 
So that code actually will activate. It'll still do its thing. Now, with that, I uh, think we're pretty good. 